People, people, please, please. What the fuck? What? What the fuck? Like for real? Like really, really? What's what? What? What the W T F? Why are we continuing to elect older people? What's up, everybody? Back again with another video. So I really didn't want to do this long form. I mean, y'all see the short form video that I posted up over here, and I mean, y'all have seen me talk about this issue once before over here. Uh, but it's because it keeps coming up in my own, like my group that I volunteer with, where I do, you know, a community service work. I just, I want to bring it back up again. So it's like, <laughs> is it too late? Like it, it, the question, I guess it comes to again, is, is it, it's in regards to, you know, what happened with the presidential debate. And I, everybody's talking about it. I mean, if they not, they have no interest in it and they should be interested in what's going on because we've seen what happened with the Supreme Court and who has power now and who's actually, now we actually live under a dictatorship and we have a king in place. So that's why I really want to get on this video. And because like I said, it keeps popping up in my own circle of, of the stuff that I do as far as community involvement, which is why I, I clap at a lot of people when they want to complain about issues and they aren't actively involved in trying to donate their time to anybody's campaign or do any form of community service work where they actually do deal with policies and actually talk to real life people. But because this issue just keeps coming up, I was like, you mean, you know, let me do another long form video. So you hear a lot of people talking about uh, how Biden did a debate and it was just a one off and that he just had an accident. But I'm like, you know, we've been talking about this for over a year now, actually longer than that. I'd say a, he, a slow start, but a good and strong finish. I'd say a, the he, the slow start, but a good and strong finish. And I think that what's most important is we saw an extraordinary contrast between the former president and the current president. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. And I mean, even myself, I'm just like, you know, we need to get past it, putting these older people in office. And I don't mean no disrespect towards anybody. I don't have no age. I don't have, I'm like with ageism. But I'm like, we need to stop electing these older people. Because I'm like, for me personally, for me personally, I don't think that we should be putting people in office that's headed, that's got one foot out the door. And I mean, out the door to the other side. I really don't think we should be doing that. And to continuously do that and then want to have some faith in them as to understanding the key issues going on today is asinine to me. Because I'm like, you know, we, we have a lot of issues when it comes to economic reform. We talk about health care. We start talking about uh, the cost of living. We start talking about, you know, housing equality and people having access to homes and being able to afford homes. You want to talk about technology and people having access to advanced technology and high speed Internet. I mean, a lot of these key things, is, uh, this, it does we should be focusing on right now when it comes to uh, robotics, when it comes to cybernetics, when it comes to nanotechnology, when it, how it affects different cultures and how we can make sure that everybody has access to said technology and or education and making sure education is affordable for a lot of people. This older generation didn't come up doing dealing with stuff like that because for them, education was affordable. Housing was very much so affordable because you could work a regular low paying job and you could actually afford to be able to take care of your family and then have a little extra, a little extra if you saved up to take family vacations and stuff you can't do that nowadays the median cost of a house now is 350 to 400 thousand dollars the median cost when it comes to income is between eighty thousand dollars 75 to eighty thousand dollars to i, I want to say on the high end ninety thousand dollars very few people are making six figures depending on what field that you're working in and even still depending on what field you're working in it's still kind of hard to afford some of these houses by because i work in technology and i've been working in technology for a long time and i make very good income i'm in one of those higher i'm in the the upper middle class bracket. But even still for me, if I didn't have my wife with me, you know, it would be hard for me to survive in the the, the economy that we're living in right now. And I have two kids. I mean, plus I have two kids in school, but still, like a lot of my income, if it was just me by myself and I was a single person by myself, it would be harder to afford things right now. If it was just me, myself, and I, and having the income that I have, I would definitely have to have another project going on or, you know, trying to get all other kind of forms of education, putting more debt, put myself in more debt to hopefully be able to get, be qualified enough to be moved up in anybody's organization and or start a business with still putting myself in some form of debt because I got to invest into that business to be able to afford living in this economy. And I say all that to say is that things are not how it used to be in the 60s, 70s, and 80s where a lot of these people were born in and they were actually surviving in and working in. It's, it's a totally different environment now and we need younger people in place. And when I say younger people, I'm talking about 55 and below. So a lot of us, we've seen 
how things have changed in the economy overall. Like overall, we've seen how things have changed in the economy and across this world from uh, landline dialing to, uh, you know, standard t- definition te- televisions and stuff, using antennas and, and things to going all the way up to high definition, flat panel, di- flat panel displays, uh, ele- EV co- electric cars now. Like we've seen how technology and how the world has changed. Education, how, how it has changed over the course of these past couple of decades. And the older generation didn't understand that. And it's like for us to continue having this debate and then we have a president in place that they knew was too old to be running anyway. And I was a Bernie person. To me, Bernie still was too old. But the only thing I liked about Bernie was Bernie has been Bernie since Bernie ran for office, period. And no matter where he's been at, Bernie has been the same Bernie. So the one thing I would have, I, I knew without a shadow of a doubt is that he would have been fighting for us, for the average American people. He would have been fighting for income. He would have been fighting for cheaper health care. I mean, he had his things that he's been standing on. And he's been standing 10 toes down on for since he's decided to run for office. I mean, since he's just been in anything for political stuff, he has been the same person going forward. So I know if you got that branded in your head, no matter what's going on, he's still talking about it to this day. That would be your bread and butter. That's your tried and true number. You can ask me any questions that would be what he stands on. But when it comes to Biden, he hadn't done that. And then, like I said, I don't address Republicans. I don't address Republicans. I don't care about, I would say his name now, because his name is always will be he who has no name on my show. But I'm going to say his name now. Trump has always been who Trump has always been. And they don't put policies in place. I argue with people all the time because they say, oh, well, you know, he's done so much for, you know, the, the average person. And I was like, that's, 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 that's bullshit. Because I was like, that's not even, I'm like, give me something that you know he has done specifically for American people. And they always say, well, he did tax reform. I said, no, he didn't. I said that because that tax rebate only lasted for like a year or two. But then after that year or two that you were seeing anything come back, the majority of it was going towards rich people and your taxes increased which was why people got pissed off when it went back <laughs> and they all the stuff that they could claim off, their subsidies, they could subsidize, they couldn't subsidize anymore. So their taxes went up and people were pissed off about it. I was like, well, we told you that it was a tax reform for rich people. I'm like, yeah, you got a break on the front end of it, but on the back end, it was going to be even worse for you. So I was like, so you do that to make you think that something is going great, and then you can turn around and blame it on, you know, the the Congress, or you can blame it on the Senate, which you can. But I was like, he was the one that presented that, and he was the one that helped to get it passed because he advocated for it because that's what he wanted. So I was like, you gotta, he gotta hate, take some blame because I'm like, just like you can blame Obama, you can blame Biden for everything, you should be to blame himself too, and they don't blame him for anything. Which is why I say I don't talk about him and I won't talk about him because we know he's trash. We know he wants to be a dictator. We already talked about Project 2025. Is I mean, it's another one of my shows here. Project 2025 has already been talked about too. And if you don't know about Project 2025, it's the whole premise of it is, is to, matter of fact, I'll put a link. I'm going I'm to be shady about it. I'm going to put a link to the actual book. Like a PDF that you can read, it'll be in the description. It'll be down below in the description. You can go read the book yourself. It is basically to give him complete and utter power to do whatever the hell he wants to do to replace everybody within the federal government with all Trump lawyers. It literally says that to be Trump loyalist. And that's the, the pre-qualifier. You got to be loyal to him. And you got to be loyal to the party and the Make America Great movement, the MAGA movement, in order to be a part of his regime. So, why do I need to talk about him? Like, people say, well, they're not mentioning it. Like, even now, like in my own circle now, they'll ask, they'll say, well, you know, they're spending, the news is spending so much time talking about Biden, about Biden in this debate. You know, they're not talking about Trump and what his plans are. I said, because... They've already talked about him. Like, and I even said, I said, they've talked enough. I'm like, how much more coverage does this man need? I was like, they've talked about this man to which end there, there is no more, much more coverage. And we know he's federally indicted. We know he's, he's a, a criminal. So he has a federal charges charge against him, which now they can't even charge. <laughs> they got to go back and, and read, probably read, well, I can't retry it, but they got to go back and look at some of the stuff that he was charged for in this case because now the Supreme Court has opened up to that. He has, um, immunity from presidential immunity for some of the stuff that he's done. So it was like, well, again, now we live under a dictatorship. So now you can do whatever you want to do under the guise of I'm doing it because I'm the president of the United States and I'm making my, my presidential decisions to do some of these things. And because I can do that, I'm immune from any form of standard policing that comes to me. So why are we on it again today? Again, it's because, okay, so now are we looking at replacing Biden? And it pisses me off now because a lot of us has been in this, has been saying this for a long time. The dude should not have been running in the first place. 
And even if he were on the, ran the first time around, he was supposed he they literally said he was supposed to give up that that seat and not run again for a second term and put somebody else in place to do that. And they didn't do that. And then the DNC turned around, like local DNC turned around and blocked other candidates from even being able to get on the ballot to even have a primary runoff to go against uh, President Biden. Because they always want to put it under, you know, who can be who can beat Trump. And I was like, anybody can beat Trump. I was like, anybody can beat Trump. All you got to do is put up a decent candidate. Anybody can beat Trump. But they don't want you to believe that. Like, they don't really, really don't want you to believe that. And they, 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 they want the optics to be that, you know, Trump is just such a terrible person. And the minute he gets in power, he's going to do whatever he can to put more um, conservative people on, also conservative people, right wing people on the Supreme Court, which cannot even define and shape us more in this country to be more right wing and put more racists in office to ban uh, trans people and their rights or the LBGTQ, anything involving the LBGTQ, to get that, that banned, to get have a massive ban on abortion. To cut down on uh, healthcare when it comes to healthcare for local people, to cut down on education costs and doing uh, forgiveness for student loans, student loans and stuff, and potentially even take us into war. And I'm like, I understand the, the consequences that come with all of that, but I was like, and they, and they always say, well, let's not focus on Biden, let's focus on um, you know the things that the good things that he's done. But I was like, give me some stuff that's actually improved. For some of us average people, like give me some, because I'm like, to, again, I just told you early on how hard it is. I'm like, he has put out some good policies and stuff in place, and I'll list them all out. He's had put some good policies in place, but I'm like, but even still, when it comes to those things, like how is it trickled down to the average person? I'm like, can we do something that trickles down? I mean, we're supposed to re reintroduce the Voting Rights Act. We had two years to do all this stuff when we had control. We had all three branches of the government as a Democrat, but. Even that, that, sorry, I got neighbors doing stuff. I had, I was like, what the hell is that noise? But um, even with that, though, I'm like, we didn't, a, a lot of stuff when they come, we didn't do the George Floyd Act. We didn't do the Voting Rights Act. And I'm talking about for the black community. So a lot, and a lot of stuff that we we should have done, we didn't do it. Now we want to put blame off on Republicans now because they control the House. And I'm like, no, I'm like, this man had every opportunity to do all this stuff. So we're, okay, so let's, let's, where are we going now? Like, who are potential candidates? And I don't know everybody because Gretchen Whitmer uh, up in Michigan, they had her on there and she herself has turned it down and said, don't disrespect me like that because, you know, I am a supporter of Biden, but I'm also a supporter of that he's too old and he needs to step down now. I need to put somebody else in place, but I'm not going to be on it. I don't want to be on that short list. And she said, I like the people of Michigan. I like supporting the people of Michigan and I want to finish doing my job in Michigan, which I can respect her for that because you got some little dog on Congress people that, uh, that that don't care about leaving their district and leaving people like, like Lucy McBath down here in Georgia. She left from her district in District 6 to come to District 7 when they did redistricting. And then when they did redistricting again, she left from District 7 to go over to District, back to District 6. And I'm like, how are you flip-flopping? And the thing that they pisses me off when it comes to people is the people don't even take that as, and look into that. They just go ahead and put her in place anyway, not saying that, okay, she keeps abandoning us. So where, where does her loyalty lie? Does it lie in the power that she has or does it uh, uh, or does it line up with actual the people that she's supposed to be supporting so I respect her for that so you got uh, Reverend Warnock like Raphael Warnock they got him on the list him and Pete Buttigieg and there's a couple of other people too that we've been talking about in my group but also they keep going back to let's just focus on Biden but let's focus on the issues and then what's really at stake when it comes to like Supreme Court and policies and things. And let's just really focus on and drill that down. But I'm like, that's kind of hard pressed to do when you don't even have a leader that can champion behind those things. I mean, this, the man is not really coming out, really hitting home on a lot of key issues and don't have he's not showing his face in public because he knows if he's showing face face in public that he's going to flip flop and stumble through words and stuff because he's too old. Like he's too he's extremely too old. So what do y'all think? I mean, I think it's time to, it's time for the man to be replaced. Because, I mean, I still hold true to my belief that I don't care who they put in there right now. Democrats going to show up and they're going to vote for them because they want somebody younger. They want, they want somebody younger. They want somebody they, actually, they can actually do. I think, I think Democrats will show up in droves to make sure that we get a newer person in. Because, I mean, Biden got too many flaws now. I mean, especially with the war in Gaza. This man, he's trickling. Who gets paid off? Who student loans get paid off? 
he's trickling that out. And mad respect to those who got theirs paid off. I, you know, I'm not going to say that you should benefit from because if you if you got yours paid off, you absolutely should be supporting him because he pushed for it. But mine ain't paid off, and so <laughs> because mine ain't paid off, that's not one of my prerequisites to where I won't support somebody. But mine not paid off, so I mean, really, ain't really did no benefit for me. And I don't have anything that I can really write off outside of other stuff that I have when it comes to personal stuff because all that stuff has been cut off. It's been cut, it's been pulled away. So when it comes for me to file my taxes, because I'm in a different income bracket bracket than other people, I'm paying higher, higher taxes. I don't have hardly anything I can subsidize outside of me doing my volunteer work and donations and stuff. But I'm like, I, so when I'm paying my taxes, my taxes are high as hell. And on top of healthcare, like the healthcare is not affordable. It is still not affordable. And I don't care what nobody say. Yeah, they got affordable care act. That did nothing for me and people like me, because my like again, because my income bracket of where I'm at, it is still expensive as hell. So I think the man need to be replaced. I don't care what nobody else says. I understand we're at the last hour, but that's not on us. That's on the Democratic Party. And I think once this election is done and over with, I think everybody should be investing their money to a totally different party. Democrats have played y'all for far too long. They played all of us for far too long because I've been a registered Democrat. I ran as Democrat when I ran for office. Democrats have played us for far too long. They've been knocking on our doors, selling us this dog on snake oil for a long time. And you did deliver sometimes, and is it, but they don't deliver a lot of the times. There's always a lot of false promises. And they'll turn around and use the same stuff that they told you they was going to do the last go around and to pitch it to you again, say, I'm going same thing that Biden doing. I'm going to do it for you if you put me back in office again. And I'm like, how many times I got to? Because you wouldn't do that on your job. If you kept failing performance reviews, how much longer are you going to be on your job? You're going to get fired, right? So why do we keep giving the pass to these elected officials and this party that we're supposed to be supporting if they're not delivering on anything? So either you're going to stop donating to the party, the DNC as a whole, or you're going to start making sure that we got candidates in place that's actually going to do what they say they're going to do. And if they don't do it, we vote that behinds out and then we put somebody brand new in. So what do y'all think? I just want to hop on here with, because I really do want to make this long form video to, to talk about him again, because I mean, everybody that know me, and if I've been watching some of my previous videos, y'all know how I felt about Biden. I've never been a supporter of his, especially since he did his uh, prison, prison reform thing that primarily targeted black people. Didn't do anything to forgive all them people, to get them released. So if they have not been released from jail, released from jail and get all those charges dropped against them if they didn't commit any like massive crimes or anything like that. So... I've already, I've always had a problem with him. I always had a problem with him pandering to the black community, not doing nothing for the black community. Yes, I'm focused on the black community because everybody else has already benefited from policies within this within this country. So I am focused on my people because my people have suffered the most and have gotten the less. So I, yeah, when you look at me, it's not about me being racist. I'm looking at what we can do to benefit us and my people that have had policies written against us for years and we behind when it comes to wealth in this system. It's not an excuse, it's actual facts. And especially when it comes to discrimination, especially when it comes to income equality, especially when it comes to uh, buying land, when it comes to farming, when it comes to getting loans. I mean, we had a recent one with the bank, what it was uh, the Navy Federal Bank not giving loans to black people. We continuously have things affect us in our community. And I am not a, a razor person. I'm not one of the people that's going to say, and say oh, I got one white friend. I got I love everybody and I want to make sure all of us are treated equally and fairly across this country. And I care about what we do going forward as a people as a whole and not individual people. But the only way to fix that, we have to fix the issues that we the mistakes that we made in the past and the mistakes we continue to make when it comes to the black and brown community, especially the black community as a whole. So when you hear me talk a lot about stuff. I, yeah, I'm gonna say I'm I'm just I'm being pro-black because I want to make sure the stuff is fixed for us and they go back and they they do some form of reparations to make up for the stuff they've done within our community and the turmoil and trauma they've caused within our community. So but I want to hop on here and talk about that real quick. Is, you know, where do y'all stand on it? Do y'all think this man should be replaced? And if he is, like who do you have as a front runner that you think that you would really get behind? At the end of the day, I don't care who it is. I mean, they can put a dog on Barney if since Barney been retired, put Barney, they can put Bob the Builder up there. I don't give a good goddamn who it is, who they put in place. They could put Fivel. I don't care. I'll vote for anybody outside of this food they have in there right now. Cause they have so many people. 40 something thousand people, they're not 50 something thousand people getting killed overseas from bombs that we can. And if you can easily bypass Congress to give money to a foreign country and then you allow them to continuously go to war and we continue to fund them. No, nah, you will. You will never get no stance behind me. And then when it comes to us and our issues, you make up every excuse in the world why things can't get done when you really can do that. You can miss me on all of those things. 
So I, I, I understand that they're having talks behind the scenes about, you know, what they stand to do with that. But to me, it's all discussion until it actually happens. And I get behind anybody else outside of him. Because I'm going to tell you right now, that threat, if you don't vote for him, it's a vote for uh, Trump. It's the same thing they said when they came to Hillary. A vote for anybody else outside of Hillary is a vote for Trump. And, you know, and she still lost anyway. So, I, you know, I know where I plan to vote. I understand what's at stake. I've, I've already seen what's at stake. But for me and my community, it's always been bad. It's going to be bad until we start doing stuff in there. So for me, I, like I've been saying, I'd rather deal with the devil I know than the one that's always lying to me in my face and acting like I don't know. So thank y'all for tuning in this episode. Hope y'all being safe out there. Y'all stay warm. I mean, stay cool too, because you know, this is a heat wave coming across this dog country. Just got a heat advisory today. I'm here in Georgia and it's like super humid outside. So, you know, we in our high nine, we're in our mid to high nineties now. So if it's humid outside, you know, it's already, it's already in the, the, the triple digits. So it's a hundred plus. So y'all make sure y'all being safe out there. Y'all being hydrated, take care of yourself, love on yourself and make sure that, you know, you're doing your body right because tomorrow ain't promised. So thank you for tuning in this episode until next time. Peace.